Updates from that meeting throughout the day, but in the meantime, the candidate pool for the Democratic nomination is beginning to narrow down, providing a clearer picture for who might go head-to-head -head with President Trump for the Oval Office. Tax policy has been a popular topic, and with us to break down the proposed policies is Maddie Dupler, senior fellow at the National Taxpayers Union and president of Forward Strategies. Maddie, great to see you. At this point, Biden and Bernie looking like the final two real contenders at this point. What are key differences? between their views when it comes to taxes. That's right. Well, with Bloomberg out of the race, you really have a choice of two futures for the Democrats. <clears throat> Excuse me. You have Biden, who represents really what was the archetypal position for Democrats for the last decade or so. Most of his tax plans very clearly mirror what was in the Obama budget. On the other hand, you have Bernie Sanders, <clears throat> as well as Elizabeth Warren, of course, who have very progressive views on where tax policy should take us. Some of the ways that these tax policies are divergent from one another is certainly on the corporate rate. Biden would return to a 28% rate, which of course is higher than where we are now at 21%. But that I say return because that's where the Obama budget have put the corporate tax rate. <clears throat> Up until now, Democrats had at least uh, agreed with Republicans that the corporate tax rate was too high and need to be cut for the American businesses to be competitive. Bernie Sanders has laid waste to that whole argument. He's saying, no, the corporate tax rate is too low. We need to increase it back up. It needs to go all the way up to 35 percent. Now, I'll point out that that is way out of step with where the rest of the uh, Western world is. The OECD average is somewhere around 26 percent for the corporate tax rate. And when you add in state corporate tax rates on top of our federal tax rate, we right now have an effect rate for most American companies that some are closer to 27 percent. A 35 percent federal rate, of course, would mean we're in the higher 40s, in the lower 40s, excuse me, and that would be almost double what the OECD average is at this point. Yeah, we were talked earlier because we had just gotten some new payroll data and we're waiting, of course, for the official BLS, num BLS numbers on Friday, uh, but they actually were better than expected, especially given that we had already seen a little bit of the impact um, of the coronavirus, but Nora Bray brought this point uh, in the early morning hours that this, you know, is really dramatically going to impact uh, smaller businesses as well. When it comes to smaller businesses, the tax benefits maybe of, of, of both of these plans, can you break down what that would look like under a President Biden, under a President Sanders? Well, both, excuse me, both Vice President Biden and Bernie Sanders have said that they want to repeal the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. That, of course, lowered individual corporate uh, tax, or excuse me, individual rates which is where most small businesses pay their taxes. You've heard the term pass-throughs maybe uh, thrown around a little bit. That's because small businesses typically pay their taxes on the individual side of the code. That income passes through to the individual owner's tax return. So by repealing the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, that would automatically increase their individual tax rates, particularly those top rates, which is where most of those, uh, most of those small businesses are paying their taxes. Bernie Sanders has suggested taking the 35% rate, that's the second highest rate right now, bumping that up to 40%. And his highest tax rate is above 50%. So think about that. If you're a small business in the country, over 50% of your income is being taken away in taxation. It makes it really difficult uh, to continue to run your business. That corporate tax rate, of course, is something that affects workers too and small businesses. That corporate tax rate, uh, experts agree, is passed through to workers. Workers are the ones who bear the brunt of corporate taxation. So that would show up in lower wages and less compensation, which would certainly be a problem, particularly right now when we're looking at the economy and looking at other pressures, coronavirus currently being one, but over the past two years, the trade war as well has really made it difficult for businesses to invest and workers have, of course, borne the brunt of those pressures. Between Biden and Sanders, are there any specific aspects of their tax plans that are more likely to maybe gain bipartisan support and ultimately get passed if they do end up winning either of them the actual presidency? You know, it's hard to know. I would say that the debate about tax policy now really is a defining feature of where the Democratic Party is leading. Like I said, Biden really wants to return to kind of what the norm was under Obama. That's a 28 percent corporate tax rate. That's a 39.6 top individual tax rate. Bernie is way to the left of that. Bernie's talking about wealth taxes starting at $32 million all the way up to $10 billion. Uh, he's got uh, surcharges on, uh, the, on uh, different corporate activi activity, uh, different of an individual activity. Uh, it will be interesting to see how that debate continues to break through. I think what's notable is that Biden has really tried to stake out a claim saying that that's not where the party should go. He has been very clear that he doesn't have a wealth tax in his plan. He thinks that we should return to what the conversation has been over the last 10 years. He certainly is adopting a lot of the same language as the progressives in the race have about, uh, about equality and uh, making sure incomes are, are more equal across the country. Uh, but his tax plans are ones that I think stand in stark contrast 
contrast to things that Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are proposing, it's not clear that any of those things could get through. One thing that I will note is that yesterday on the Hill, Secretary Mnuchin brought up once again, uh, he was questioned about the state and local tax deduction. That's something that was capped in the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, primarily because it is a tax deduction that wealthy income earners are able to take. He said he'd be willing to look at that again with the president. So that could potentially be one spot where Democrats were looking to repeal the Tax Cut and Jobs Act and the administration might be able to join hands. But I would argue that that would be the worst possible approach for uh, the, the president to take, rolling back parts of the plan that actually dampened the effect on wealthy earners and created a more equal tax code. I would encourage the administration not to pursue that route. All right. Well, there's no one better to break any of this stuff down than Maddie Duppler. She's a senior <laughs> fellow at the National Taxpayer Union. Thank you so much for being on with us. She's also the president of Forward Strategies. Have a great day.